Welcome to Clout 941, Sarasota's only live show about local politics and issues. I'm Ron Filipkowski, the host. Tonight we have a great show. We have attorney Andrea Mogensen, who is the attorney who sued the city of Venice over the violation of their sunshine laws. This case has been a fiasco all throughout, and uh, hopefully, that's my opinion, not hers. Uh, we'll hear what she has to say later, but hopefully we're going to hear all about how it all unfolded and played out and where we're at now. First, my commentary on the news. Two months ago, I predicted to you, and I was the first person who said this, that Charlie Crist would be our next United States Senator in 2010, and the next Governor of Florida would be Vern Buchanan. The newspapers are just now starting to pick up on, on what I've been saying on this show for the last two months. The two biggest reasons why Charlie Crist is going to leave the governor's mansion is, first and foremost, his new wife. His new wife hates living in Tallahassee. She's from New York City, she's a socialite, and the choice is you be governor and you live year-round in Tallahassee in the quaint little governor's mansion, or you split half your time between Clearwater St. Pete and Washington, D.C. It's a no-brainer. Crist is out of there. There's no question about it. The second reason is Charlie Crist went to, went to the governor's mansion in order to pass out candy. He wanted to be Santa Claus. He wanted to be the populist governor. The problem is there is no money. Florida has no money. We have a balanced budget amendment. We can't borrow money, and there's nothing to give out. It is simply no fun being governor when there's no money. But what are they doing in Washington? They're passing out money, and Charlie Crist wants in. We also predicted that Vern Buchanan would want to be governor because Vern Buchanan is an executive. He is somebody who likes to be in charge. He doesn't want to be in the minority of a body of 435 people. And he is, he is going to absolutely, we believe, run for governor. Next, the war over the city commission race between the Democrat and the Republican parties. Got an email earlier this week from Joe Gruters, who's the chairman of the local Republican Party, saying that Rita Ferrandino and the Sarasota Democrats violated their truce and their handshake agreement, and, it, and the war is on. Try to happen. I called both of them and got both sides of the story. What Joe Gruter, they, they agree on certain things. One, that there was somewhat of a handshake agreement that neither side, since it was a nonpartisan race, would get too heavily involved in the city commission races. Neither party would take a side or get too much involved. However, what happened was that the Democratic Party of Sarasota uh, did some calls to absentee voters, did some robocalls, and promoted the sole Democrat in the race, Suzanne Atwell, a little bit in these calls and which Gruters deemed a violation of their truce. Therefore, he decided that the Sarasota Republican Party was going to jump in with both feet and support the Republicans in the race, Turner and Cara Giulio. It's certainly been interesting. There's been a little bit of uh, uh, barbs going back and forth. Nothing's been reported in the newspaper about it, but it has been hot behind the scenes politically. The Herald Tribune's endorsement is a joke as usual. They build up all three candidates, say why all three candidates are great, and then endorse two without saying why. Here's what they should do. They should have a disclaimer over any endorsement or any article they write about the Sarasota City Commission, and here's what it should say. We at the Herald Tribune got a monstrous tax break so we could build our new building downtown. And we depend on three of the five city commissioners to every year vote for us so that we can be allowed to rent out a third of the office space in this building to private enterprise so we can keep our business afloat. Therefore, we need the support every year of three city commissioners. Therefore, we have a conflict interest in every city commission issue, every city commission race, and that's the disclaimer that should be put, but of course is not, at the bottom of anything that they write involving the city commission. They need to curry favor with city commissioners. Therefore, what do they do? The three people in the race, they praise all three of them, pick two, and don't even give a reason why. It's ridiculous, as usual. And finally, Sheriff Balkwell. Sheriff Balkwell had two firewalls that were in place to hopefully protect him from being arrested and prosecuted for the whole laptop stealing a chair fiasco. The first firewall was his successor, Tom Knight. He was hoping, presumably, that Tom Knight would cover for him and not recommend that charges be filed. That firewall has been smashed down. Tom Knight did recommend that he be charged with grand theft. His agency did. The second firewall was Balkwell's friend, State Attorney Earl Moreland. 
no doubt he was counting on, on him to find some reason not to prosecute the case. However, Earl Mullen decided to appoint a special prosecutor and have a, an outside party make the determination of whether he's going to be prosecuted. Bad news for Balkwell. That makes it more likely than ever that we are going to see his mugshot on the front page of the newspaper sometime soon. Now to our guest, Andrea Mogensen. Andrea, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Ron. I'm not going to ask you about politics, but I will ask you about what you think about the appointment of the special prosecutor. What, what do you think about that when a state attorney asks for an outside counsel to do it? I think it's an excellent idea. They are way too dependent on each other. Anything else would have been a conflict of interest, and I'm really happy to see Earl Moreland decide to do that. So you think that it's better to have somebody independent kind of make this, this, this determination? I don't think his agency could be independent. You know, they're just too dependent on the work of that agency. He made an excellent call by doing that. Okay, when we come back from our break, we are going to delve into what Andrea's life has been wrapped around for the last year, her lawsuit against the city of Venice. We come back.